Okay, I'm a little early, but that's okay. It gives me a chance to do a few things for setup here. maybe go back in and edit this out the silent stuff at the beginning we'll see here we'll see and maybe I'll just be talking to myself and that's okay too says somebody's out there watching you could wave and say hello a few people all right hello hello I made lots of progress on my huge Hi, Yvonne, how are you? I've been working on my big journal project. Actually, they're little journals, but... Hello, Quilts Mom, hello. You are new to me. I have a huge journal project, not as in a huge journal, but where I am making uh, 60 small journals. And, well, they're gonna end up like this when I'm all done. They are going to be... Um, there, the covers are index cards where I've done the patchworks. I'm doing good, Yvonne. I'm coming into the home stretch on this big project if you've been following along. And so I got 60 of these covers done, which took me a lot longer than I really wanted them to take. So I'm going to have to figure out a, maybe a different method of doing these so I can streamline them. So now I have the last little thing that's supposed to go on the cover, because these are going in goodie bags for an event for uh, young girls, is she wants this little quote on the cover of all the journals. So I thought, well, if I'm gonna sit here and tear things apart. Hi, Denise, you're new to me too. Welcome, welcome. So happy to see some new faces here. I'm doing busy work. I'm not doing anything that's earth shattering, it's not earth shattering kind of stuff. I just need to, let's see, maybe I should tear them this way first. Yeah, let's do it this way first. So what I want to do is get all the quilts, or get all the quotes torn up and the edges inked and then uh, backed with a little piece of material and then I can sew them on the little patchworks. Then I can glue the patchworks to the covers. So I'm almost done. So what else is uh, everybody else working on today? I need to think about what I'm going to be doing when I finish these. I'm hoping I can get these done by Friday. You know, it's always nice to get a big order, but then it's always nice to get them out the door and uh, be able to move on to something new. Oh, I'm glad you're having coffee with us. I had my my coffee quota this morning, so that's basically what's fueling me for this afternoon. This has pretty much been my focus for the last few weeks, is working on these journals and trying to figure out a way to give the client what they want and yet streamline the process so it takes me less time to do them because I'm doing 60 in this batch and then next year I'm going to have to do three batches of 60. So. I need to be able to do them in a speedy fashion and also in such a way that I don't get sick and tired of doing them because that's no fun to work on a big project that takes you forever. Hey, Lorna. So happy to see you here, Lorna. Quilt's mom just finished a three and a half by five inch sewing theme playing card mini journal. Ooh, do you have a video up on that or pictures somewhere? I found when I was cleaning the studio about, I'm not kidding, about 20 packs of cards. I must have picked them up every time I went to the dollar store. I don't want to just sew every single one of them, but I'm, I gotta come up with some ideas on what to do with all those playing cards. Oh, so Denise is making dinner. Ah, so we're not quite, we're, I'm in California here, so it's, not quite thinking about dinner time, and actually I already know what we're gonna do for dinner. We're just gonna grill some hot dogs because it's hot here, and that way we can do that outside and not heat the house up anymore. Hey, Joey, how are you? 
Those of you that are interested in the um, frenzy around all the issues with copyright we're having right now, please go over and check out Joey's channel. She has got um, a great live stream that she did with Tracy Fox talking about the issue and ways to handle things. And it's just, it's an important issue. Uh, those of you that have watched any of my other videos know I feel very strongly about copyright. I have the videos on where you can find copyright free images. As a writer for over 30 years, I'm very sensitive to the idea of somebody stealing my words, stealing somebody's art is no different. So go check out that video and see what they're learning and sharing. And then Lorna, do you have a video of the latest, um, do you have a video of your latest journal? Oh, bummer, it's all, everything looks fine here. Darla, I'm getting ready for company. Hey, Rosemary, I'm not getting ready for company. People don't come to see us over here. <laughs> I live on the edges of a tourist town, so most people don't like to come out to where we are in the summertime because the traffic is absolutely hideous. Hi, Linda. Hi, Luz. Angela, welcome. Oh, I have seen you, though, in the comments. I haven't had a chance to reply to you all the way yet, but I'm so happy to see you here. And Maureen. You taking a little break from caretaking and getting your energy level back up. Rosemary, what are you working on today? Some more glue books, something for your shop. Edith Holden journals. Okay, you guys, go check out. You know how to do that. Check on the person's name. You check on the three dots next to their name and you can see. Uh, Taylor made journals. Lorna makes the most beautiful journals and she's got a new video up of some gorgeous Edith Holden journals that she made. Oh, <laughs> I have company. Well, I am glad that Lorna shared it. Thank you so much. Hey, Maggie. Maggie's probably getting ready to be thinking about dinner too. Okay, now I'm gonna have to go take out check out Patty's channel as well and Louise oh my goodness I think this might be like some of the largest crowd that I've ever had here and here I'm doing something really boring like getting ready to ink papers but honest honest it's it's worth it because this is going to be my end result I will show you some of you that haven't been here before I will show you where things started this all started with ICAD this year where I decided that for ICAD I was going to make patchworks because I just absolutely love crazy quilts and that sort of thing. So they're not quite crazy quilts, not quite patchworks. I don't know what they are. I'm calling them patchworks. And I just did them on the back of uh, three by five index cards. And then I made them into a journal. And then a friend of mine saw them and decided that it would be a really good goodie bag item for an event that she puts on for young girls so she placed an order with me for 60 of these little things so that's why I have been working like crazy on getting these done because I don't want to get sick and tired of making them and I have all these other things that I want to do while we still have some summer left there's so many outside activities that I want to do ooh photo album Rosemary I'll look forward for that video Wow, what a lovely crowd here. I love them. They're such a fun size, and I'm glad that she picked. I did them in both the 4x6. I did them in the, oh, whoops, where's one of my small ones? So I did the small ones, and then I did the big ones. And the big ones are just a really nice size because I can just use regular printer paper folded in half, so I don't have to make one cut. And then I was really glad when she asked me if I could make the pages removable because, of course, that meant I could do them like a traveler's notebook, and that was going to go a lot faster. And I would be done except these little quotes that she wants for the girls. Always remember that you are absolutely unique, just like this journal. So she wants one of those on the front of every journal, which is a really nice sentiment for the girls. And then there's a little charm that goes on them, and I'll do a video when when I have the big stack done. Several Canadians. 
Oh, I don't know about the expert, Lorna, but I have a lot of opinions, that's for sure, about copyright. Joey's going to become our resident expert, I think. She's doing all this wonderful research into the different companies. I'm just, I'm a big rule follower, so I, uh, I want to make sure I'm following the rules on this sort of thing. Oh, I'm almost all torn up. Wow, and then you can watch me ink. Is that exciting or what? <laughs> uh. So I have a question for everybody in the group. If you're here because you like doing junk journals and glue books and, and handmade books, I wonder what first draw, drew you to making the, the types of books that you make. What kind of got you started in all of this? Rosemary, me too. I'm going to use nature stamps and things like that. I'm, I'm going to probably off a lot of the ones that I have just because I don't want to deal with the headache. All right, I don't think I can do this any easier. I think I'm just going to have to do these individually. Might have gone just as fast if I'd done that the first time. Patty and Michelle are to blame for you, huh, Maggie? <laughs> Challenge from Nick the Booksmith. Ah, Chronic Crafter's been doing something like this for a long time. I've been so used to putting the words into books that the idea of actually making books didn't occur to me for quite some time. I took some collage classes and got excited about collage, which then sort of led me to some bookmakers. Um, actually, no, what it was is I was looking for more collage stuff online, which led me to bookmakers. Joey, yep, paper addiction from a very young age, always writing things down. But see, I never, the art stuff, I never had a, a teacher that kind of sparked anything with me. And in fact, I had the opposite in middle grades. I had teachers that were not supportive of artistic efforts of mine so the art thing it's been quite a uh, insecurity I guess to overcome ah a lot of former scrapbookers perhaps have gone to bookmaking I my poor kids did not get good scrapbooks their grandmother made scrapbooks, but I didn't make scrapbooks. They were lucky they got pictures. I took lots of notes, though. I have lots of stories about them written down. And I suppose I'm not the only one that starts making one particular type of something, makes a whole bunch of them until you get burnt out, then goes on and learns how to do a different type of something or put a twist on it. Yeah, Angela, I wish that I had done that. I mean, I don't, well, scrapbooking itself wasn't as popular. I mean, my kids are 37 and 40, so scrapbooking wasn't a super big deal back then. I've got lots of those pictures in those yellow magnetic photo albums that should have been taken out years ago because everything's going all yellow. I always wanted to be a writer from a very young age, so I'm glad that I got to live that dream, but I'm also okay with letting go of that part of my life now. I still write, but I write for me. I'm not as worried about the publishing industry anymore. It's changed a lot from when I first started, but I'm happy. I had a good ride. I had books published. I went around and did speaking. I did teaching. Yeah, the, the yellowing photo albums. Suppose I could get really energetic and I could scan all those photos, which I should do anyways, and then correct them in Lightroom, but haven't gotten to that point yet. That long to-do list that we just keep adding things to, right? Yeah, scrap the grandkids. That would have been a thing to do. My kid's grandmother did pretty good on the, the cards and the scrapbooks for our 
only grandson. Yeah, it's a whole new world from scrapbooking. You can take a lot of the things that you did with scrapbooking and apply them to your journal making. I thought the junk journaling was really going to be my bag and discovered that that didn't hold my interest nearly as long as making eco prints and doing things with nature, which makes sense because I'm a native plant gardener and that's that holds a big part of my heart. I can't physically do a lot of the stuff I want to out in the garden anymore. So trying to come up with ways that I can keep the garden with me with my art. Deb, I don't know, it's something about the kids as they get older, um, this generation, they don't want, well, my daughter wanted pictures. My son wanted a couple pictures of him doing certain things, but um, my son is like, he's he's like an absolute minimalist. He wants like to not have anything. He wants to keep everything in like one room and not be weighed down by anything else, which is admirable, I guess. Joey, I did morning pages for many years, many, many years. Gosh, I remember when Julia Cameron's book on morning pages first came out. That was just like groundbreaking. Helped me through a lot of blocks, helped me through some rough times in my life. As I'm tearing these things down into smaller pieces, I'm thinking I was going to stitch around them. I probably should have made more space around them, but I don't want to cover up too much of the patchwork. Oh, tiny house living? No. We moved from a big house to a smaller house um, about four and a half years ago, and that was perfect for us. We went from two floors to a single floor. We went from a tiny, a big house with a tiny yard to a smaller house with a huge yard, and now we're fixing it up as our forever home. But still, we do need less junk, and we're I'm getting better at getting rid of stuff, but not nearly, nothing like my son who just, boom, gone, out of here. Bye, Yvonne. Thanks for stopping by. We'll talk to you later. Darla, it's kind of hard to stay minimal when you're crafting. I know. But you're, you're, you change. It's like I have, in the garage, I have two huge plastic bins filled with magazine images and I moved them from the studio out to the garage because I thought well I'm not working with magazine images anymore and uh, they've been out in the garage for a year now and it's probably time for me to let them go because it's just not that's not where my interest is but that doesn't mean that I have space in the studio because of course I filled it up with things like um, paper and fabric well dedicated a whole big closet to my fabric stash I got a haul video I have to do. I um, I caved in and went to Goodwill because I was down there getting at City Hall getting my business license so I can be all official and stuff. And um, I stopped into Goodwill and I shouldn't have done that, but I stopped in and they had just put out this humongous must have been like for a banquet table um, cutwork embroidery tablecloth. And then I'm wandering around and I see her going to go put something else up there. And then she's got the matching hangers or matching um, napkins on a hanger. And so I snag those. Oh, okay. Bye, Maureen. Take care of yourself, okay? So, Angela, you're the memory keeper. It's awesome that your family has somebody that does that. Write those things down because, boy, people forget way too too quickly. They forget. I have not done a family tree. I did some searching around in genealogy and stuff because I was looking for my birth father and found him and found him and a few siblings that I didn't know I had. But uh, not had the bug to go do the full-fledged family tree stuff. Should have had all these things torn ahead of time, huh? Yeah, give my hand a rest and we'll do some inking instead.
Uh-oh, I grabbed the darker stuff. Dang. This is not vintage photo. This is walnut stain. How's that going to look? That's eh, going to be okay. Maybe I'll wet the papers before I sew them on and let it kind of wrinkle up. That might be a good idea. I'll do that. I'll wrinkle them up. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. You prefer the walnut? I just, I guess it'll pop on here. I'm going to put it on the back of a piece of fabric. I really don't want to wet the things and let them dry. I want to see if I can get all these little quotes done today. I really have a mental thing. I want to go get the, uh, get these things done by Friday, but I don't know. So Maggie, are you coming over to the dark side and playing with more paper now and less fabric and lace? Or are you still going to keep making all those beautiful lacy book creations that you do? Suppose if I stitch these on with brown ink too, it'll kind of draw things together. I meant to put in some buff colored paper in the printer and forgot. We make it work, right? We channel our Tim gun and make it work. I'm going to do, I still, I have got lace put aside for fabric books. I'm absolutely going to do them. I don't think I'll be able to do anywhere near as intricate of the stuff that you do. But when I found all that cut work embroidery, the napkins were perfect. I mean, they just look like journal covers right there. You know, once you fold them in half and they've got just all this beautiful uh, work done on them. I've also been reading a lot and looking at a lot of pictures on slow stitching. I've got itchy fingers. I want to get this project done because there's all these other things I want to do. And I know me, if I pull out something else and let my enthusiasm for a new project take over, <laughs> I won't get these things done on time. I know I will, Maggie. I had no idea I was going to fall in love with fabric. I really did not. Now I understand how it is that fabric lovers, sewers, quilters, whatever, end up with, you know, entire rooms devoted to their stash. You know, I was so excited. I thought, oh, I'm going to make these patchworks and I'm going to use up a lot of my material. And it's such a joke because they don't take that much material. Even if I covered the entire index card with a piece of material, they wouldn't uh, take up that much material. So I think I'm going to have to do some bigger projects with fabric to use up some of the stash. I've only done a very little bit of it. Let's see. I do I have any of it here? Uh, no. I've got a bunch of pieces. I've got some muslin cut and some linen cut and some other little strips, you know, to add to it. And I want it, my goal is just to have a little basket for slow stitching set by the TV and the couch so that I can just do that while we're watching TV in the evenings. Hey, Lori, welcome. Glad to see you. Yeah, Maggie's videos are awesome. When you look at all the detail work that she puts into those fabric books, I'm just blown away every time. Oh, looking for needle books, and then you came upon, upon the journals and caught the bug. <laughs> ah, so a quilter. So then, so does your quilting material have a room of its own? How do you control your fabric stash? Or do you? <laughs> I'm grateful for my indulgent husband that lets me, you know, here's, we made a renovation and we made this new closet where there would never been a closet and we're making all these plans like that's where all the coats were going to go and then suddenly my fabric was in there and took over the entire closet and he's fine with it so I'm grateful for that because otherwise I'd probably have to put it all out in the garage. Oh you don't control it you just let it go. <laughs> my trouble is we have a big dog who is all white and she is constantly shedding. So anybody that gets something from me is probably going to get some bonus white German shepherd dog hairs in their stuff. I can't keep it away from the fabric. So you quilters and fabric 
people that are much more experienced with fabric than I am. Tell me what is the secret to getting better with my rotary color cutter? I have a really nice one. I've got a sharp blade. I've got a metal ruler. But boy, I stink at it. Lisa, thanks for popping in to say hi. Happy to see you here. Lori, normally I use the um, a lighter stain, but I accidentally grabbed the walnut stain instead of this one, and I'm, I'm okay with it. These are just going on the front of the cover. But yeah, I've used the archival um, as well. I have a bunch of stamp pads that I don't use anymore that I'm probably going to just make some smeary, smushy papers with just to use them up and get them off the shelves. Patty, a plastic quilter's ruler. So that's better than using a metal ruler. And are you supposed to pull it towards you or push it away from you? I've got a huge, oh, hi, Curly T, didn't see you pop in. Oh, they're wider. Yeah, Deb, I press too hard as well. I press too hard and then go too fast. So I need to just kind of go a regular pressure and slow down and maybe not try to go through too many at once. When I was doing all the covers though, I mean, you know, I had to cut 60 fronts and backs of these things. Oh, that would help, a nonstick bottom. Push away, okay, push away, away, away. Ah, so I've been doing it wrong. I've been pushing it, pulling it toward me. I will try that with the next batch. I do love my huge cutting mat. Okay, and I'll get a nonstick ruler, bottom ruler. That makes sense too. But I got a nice, an Ulfa cutter and I got a refill pack of blades so I can make sure it's always sharp. I'm not, I may look at for a different model that holds the same size blades because it's nice to have the retractable cover on this thing, but I have to hold the cover down when I cut and that makes me think of two things at once and then I mess it up. I do stand while I'm cutting, yeah. I just need to practice, I guess, like everything else. We fall into the trap of thinking, you know, oh, I went out and bought the same tool I saw so-and-so using, so everything's going to be fine now. And of course, that's not the way it goes. <laughs> I have all the same paints that I've seen this, you know, fabulous painter that's been doing this all her life use. And, you know, I haven't practiced yet, but why isn't my stuff coming out? We've got to give ourselves a chance to, to learn how to use the tools of our craft. we got to give ourselves a chance to fall down and then stand back up again and try it again and again and again. I mean, none of us probably are thrilled with the first few journals that we made, right? <laughs> I'm not. They quickly got torn apart and made into other things. I do have a nice mat with a grid, Curly, thank you. Hey, Took, you made it. Glad to see you here. Patty says, for a quick tutorial, look up how to cut quilt squares video. All righty, I will do that. Thank you. Because I am um, very new to messing with fabric and the sewing machine. I'm going to have to actually change the needle in my poor machine. Haven't done that after working on all these journals. I thought, you know, I've put it through an awful lot since I've had it. I probably need to change the needle. And I'm not sure if it's supposed to be oiled or something like that. I blow it out with canned air, but I don't know if there's anything else I'm supposed to be doing to it. Took, what are you working on today? You've been busy, busy, busy. I have a brother, not very expensive machine. I have a brother 3700 so I'm already getting 
the urge to upgrade the machine to something that has a few more fancy stitches than this one does. I want flowers and leaves. No oil? Okay. Ooh, you're working on a custom order, Took. Nice. Good for you. Didn't we used to have to oil machines, sewing machines years ago, or is that just in my imagination? I'm trying to think back to home ec class. It seemed like we used to have to oil them. All right, I wanna, oh, here's a few more. Let's do these and then I'll tear some fabric and see how these guys are gonna look. Most of the time I just use two stitches, but I'm starting to play around with some other ideas with my eco prints and fabric and I kind of want to explore some more stitching with them. Oh, now my hands are going to be wonderfully walnut stained for a while. All right, let's do something a little different. Let's figure out how big I don't want them so big that they're going to take over the front of the journal. Let's see, am I, oh, I guess I am in frame. All right, if I, out there. Okay, well, that's good to know that I don't have to worry about oiling it because I'd be terrified that I was going to mess something up. Oh, this obviously wasn't squared when I started, so, huh. Uh, yeah, Darla, I know. Go back and read the manual, right? <laughs> I would have done that before I tried to oil it. Just every so often it makes a little kind of a clunky sound, so I wasn't sure. But then it takes a lot of abuse for me. That's kind of, I'm really glad I got an inexpensive one to get started with. That compressed air is awesome for blowing those things out. When I finished sewing on all the covers, so I was going through a couple layers of fabric plus the cardboard that I have in the center. I'm using old file folders for the bases. Blew out all kinds of junk. I'm gonna have threads. Okay, who else saves threads like this? I always save these threads some projects coming up I'm gonna use them on. All right, quilters and sewing people with more experience than I am, here's another question for you. On these covers that I make, right now I'm covering them with you know fabric on both sides and it's a folder, file folder in the center. Would I get enough strength if I just fused them together with um, some fusible interfacing of some kind, a heavy duty fusible interfacing? I'm trying to figure out a way to speed up the process of making these covers. Me what, Rosemary? Me has a sewing machine that needs to be oiled or me something else? Yeah, I was trying to figure out a way to, you know what, what What took me the most time, well, of course, cutting all that stuff out, but cutting the fabric, and then once I sewed everything on, then I had to cut around, you know, the excess, because there's always excess, because I couldn't cut evidently completely straight. I was trying to figure out if I could, you know, lose a step somewhere along the way. So heat and bond, I was, oh, you collect threads. Yes, Rosemary, I should have expected that you would say yes to the threads. I'm actually, I've got jars out in the garage. I'm going to bring them in and actually sort all my threads by colors because I have a new project where I want to use them by colors. 
So now if I use the heat and bond, I wouldn't have to use any cardboard. I could just fuse the two things of fabric together, do you think? And would that be strong enough for these little journals? And then I could stitch around it just to make sure it was gonna hold. I don't mind the stitching around it, but I was thinking if I was gonna do a bunch, I could just fuse all the fabric at once and then cut it to the right size. Heavy interfacing, okay. I'm gonna give that a try maybe on, on a sample for next year. But I'm happy that I was able to um, make it repeatable and it's not, take, I mean, it's taking time, but it's not taking as much time as I feared. And I, it's all time, but I like that there's some activities like putting the patchworks together that I can do while we're watching TV. I especially love the threads, Rosemary, from Sari Silk. I bet you do too. Just they feel so good and they get kind of fluffy and... And then I get to sew all of these things to all the index cards. <laughs> I'll put some brown thread in the machine for that. I think that will tie the walnut ink together. There's a thick heat and bond, okay. I need to go to the, the fabric store. Not because I need fabric, but because I need to look at the heat and bond things. It's a story of my life though. I almost always start off the, the most difficult way possible on something and then over time I refine it and get better at doing something so it's not quite as crazy. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I need 60 of these. Uh... Oh, glue on both sides would be awesome, Lori. Thank you for saying that. I will look for something like that. Uh, okay, what do we got here? So I'll have like little bits of purple on them. Here we go. I think this is wide enough. Perfect. You don't sew, but you save silk threads. There's just something, silk threads are pretty awesome. All right, let's see. As soon as this is, it might not tear well, but ah, good. Good old cotton, ye old cotton sheet. Gee, and then I have enough. That's a good tie for a journal. All right. Oh man, this is this is exciting television here, right? <laughs> the the, the uh, junk journal junk journalers equivalent of watching paint dry. But I'm glad to have some people keep me company. This is something I have to do no matter what. So thanks for hanging out with me. Well, I do. Stabilizer with glue. Okay, I just need to make a trip down to the store and which will probably only have, you know, a very slim pickings and I'll end up looking online. But, oh, there's a quilt store in town now, too. I bet you the quilt store would be the one to go to. Then I wouldn't have to drive as far either. It's funny, the quilt store in town is, it's wonderful. They have like all the latest fabrics and things. But I walk in there and the fabrics are beautiful and I've picked up some Tim Holtz fabrics there. But my first thought when I walk in is, man, everything looks so new because I get most of my fabric by recycling clothes from the thrift store. So it throws me when I go in there. But I bet they would have all kinds of different stabilizers to choose from. <laughs> Lorna, okay, you let me know when you're going to do a video of ironing paper and I'll come watch. 
I wouldn't let anybody watch me iron paper because, well, you don't see my face, so you wouldn't see how red I get from the heat and how much I'm sweating. Oh, ironing, important, but man, I don't iron clothes, but I iron paper and I iron fabric. But dang, that, that's a hard thing to do in the summertime. And then I ironed a bunch of my distress papers. I use the leaf impressions, you know, and I use all the distress sprays to make those. And I ironed them and they were, they looked great. And I scanned the first, like, I don't know, 20 of them. And then I went back a few days later to scan the rest of them. And it's like they'd wrinkled all back up again. I swear those distress sprays, it's like they never dry. These are getting wider and wider. What am I doing here? I'm measuring from the wrong thing. You guys didn't shout at me and tell me to pay attention. This is why I don't sew clothes is because I forget to measure. I could never build a house because everything would be crooked. Thank goodness this stuff is so old. It tears easy. I do. I put them under books, but these things, when, when I first did the distress pages, I put them under books. Well, I let them dry on the floor in the studio for a few days, and then they were mostly dry. They take forever to dry. And then I put them under books for like a week, and then they still get, I don't know, I guess the paper must expand when it gets wet and whatever you know chemical changes happen to give us those great colors. So they're never completely flat, which bugs me when I scan them, but they still you know, make great pages. Chicken is done. Have a good evening. Thanks for popping in, Denise. Happy to see you here. They are curly. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you finally telling me that. <laughs> yep, I forgot to measure from the right end. Here we go. All right. Curly, what are you working on lately? Okay, we use the paper to measure. Yeah, they add some texture, Ray. They do add some textures. You know, it's just when you're a recovering perfectionist, sometimes um, those kind of things like trip me up. But I'm, I'm getting better about it. <laughs> just working. Oh, bummer. But, you know, paychecks are good. We like to eat. That's why I'm having to get these done so I can get paid. Then I'll be able to take a few months to, well, I got to work on another big project, but it's nothing's ordered. It's just a place that I'm going in November where I know I'll probably sell a lot of stuff. So I need to build up some inventory. I was hoping to be able to do open studios this year. I'm not going to have enough inventory. So they do it in October of every year. And I just don't think I'm going to have a chance to get enough inventory made up to do it. So next year, maybe. Oh, you're in a crafty funk. Oh, whoops. Wow. I don't know why. Everything went very strange on the, the uh, video. Is it clear to you guys here or is it not focusing? Let's see if we can get anything to focus. Okay, are you still there? Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. The phone, I took the case off my phone. We got the air going, but the phone gets hot, which means I'm probably not going to be able to stay on uh, much longer. I've got to go get Streamlabs installed so that I can do the uh, use the webcam.